back on the couch in the Try 24-7 interview room and this time we're joined by Chrissy Wellington. <laughs> Good to be here. I hadn't forgotten really, I was just thinking of what am I going to say for my intro and then I knew I'd get it wrong. So uh, how are you enjoying the show? Are you, are you able to get around here without getting stopped every uh, two metres? Um, people do tend to recognise me uh, more often than not here, which is always a privilege, but it does make walking around incognito a little bit a little bit difficult. But no, it's really it's really great to be here. I always make a point of coming to the triathlon show. It, I love connecting with the British public. It's where it started for me here, and I just like to do my bit to give back. You, you were on the Brooks stand, which is right next to my Compa Trainer booth, and uh, you seemed to be there for quite a while. Yeah, the the line was kind of snaking round. Sorry to steal any of your your <laughs> customers, but no, it was it it truly is great. There are so many passionate people out there, and it's great to be able to share that with them. And what I love is it seems to be just as many women as men. Um, are lining up for autographs as triathletes in their own right and it's it's really really great to see so aside from obvious sponsorship duties or do, do, do they call you an ambassador now um they call me many things depending on how they're feeling about me at the time but yeah i'm, I'm still an ambassador for for you know all of the sponsors that i've been working with over the course of the past few years and and, that, and that's really great because it means that I can continue to work with them to develop great products and continue to be part of, of the whole triathlon scene. So, aside from your ambassadorial roles within the sport, um, what does a retired, undefeated Ironman world champion do from now on? I bake cakes, Simon, lots of bacon. Cupcakes? Uh, any kind of cake, um, but then I eat them all. And Jeremy Kyle watching, ah, yeah, this yeah. morning. Yeah, no, um, <laughs> I'm keeping busier than ever. Um, as I expected, life is very, very diverse. And whilst that's incredibly exciting, it also brings for me its own challenges. You know, I've gone from being very structured, very goal orientated, very regimented, mono dimensional in terms of um, kind of my life path to doing loads of different things, which is actually quite hard um, and is a big challenge for me. Um, so I found it exciting, but also very, very challenging to cope with my life away from, from professional sport. I'm doing a lot more charity, charity work um, in terms of working for the, the charities that I've always supported, but also increasingly focusing on developing my own projects. So I've got a couple of projects that I'm quite heavily involved with, which are taking up quite a lot of my time. And I'm really, really excited about still doing a lot of, um, related to the book. So a lot of public speaking engagements in, you know, on subjects covered, covered by the book, um, corporate speaking engagements. And then it's still quite a bit of travel, so I'm managing to combine the, the work travel with some pleasure, pleasure travel too, but so much to keep me busy. And of course, whilst I've retired from professional sport, I definitely haven't hung up my lycra. So I'm still keeping fit and doing, you know, doing something each, each day as, as much as I can, but definitely not to the extent that I used to. So do, do you find it difficult now that you've not a, got a goal of training and preparing for a race? Do you find it difficult to get out there and train? Because I know a lot of triathletes will say, if I, if I don't have that goal, I, I, I can't get out there. It's just, it's not, just nothing driving me on. I think we're all motivated by many different things. And having a goal is a huge motivational force. But having a goal, having a race goal is not the only reason to get out and train in the morning. You know, we also get out and train because we love it because we enjoy it. We enjoy the journey as much as the goal itself. Yeah. You know, we want to be with our friends. We want to see great scenery. We want to test ourselves. We want the challenge. So yes, not having a single goal is um, can be difficult at times, but I always, I, you know, I'm motivated by many, many different things. Least of all, the, de the desire to keep fit and fit and healthy. Um, so I'm not finding it too difficult to motivate myself and I'm actually enjoying doing 
sports that are not necessarily swim, bike and run. I've been doing a lot more yoga and Pilates, actually, not sports in the strictest sense, but something that's really challenging yeah. for me as someone that can't rest their mind. But I was also, I've also been doing boxing and Taibo, wow. which have been really, really great because I have zero coordination. So to do those different sports... Uh, it's actually been really, really good fun and, and non-competitive, which is maybe what I needed for a little while. And next weekend, I'm doing a cross-country ski marathon, wow. which will be interesting given that I don't own any skis, can't cross-country ski, and have just spent the last month in Guatemala and Costa Rica where there's no snow. So training has been limited, but anyway, I'm hoping sheer determination and stubbornness will get me through yeah and if it goes on for 12 hours you'd be the last woman standing so uh... yeah perhaps unless i make a big chrissy sized hole in the, in the snow and that's where i that's where i lay <laughs> you, we were just talking then before we started the interview about um about about when you first started working with brett and and that that came from a a short discussion about the, the triathlon and ironman for you was more than just training the body it was about training the mind and the other stuff that perhaps we as athletes don't give as much space to in our training program just can you just explain a little bit more about that please yeah i i i don't think i i gave enough credence to the importance of the mind and training the brain when i first started and Brett said to me, you know, physically, Chrissy, you've got what it takes to be a champion, but I'm going to have to chop your head off, which was a slightly macabre way of telling me I had a lot of work to do mentally. You know, I, I couldn't rest. I couldn't relax. I over-obsessed. I over-analyzed. I'm sure that's very familiar, uh, a very familiar trait and characteristic uh, to, to triathletes out there. And unless I learned to get a handle on those, I learned to rest, I learned how to relax I learn uh, not to over obsess but also learn how to train my mind to endure discomfort to cope with pain to um, uh, to overcome adversity I would never be a champion and those are the skills that I've honed in the years since and I think what you'll find is a lot of athletes, a lot, the majority of age group athletes and the majority of pro athletes are doing very, very similar training. It's not the training that sets you apart. It's the mental strength um, and the other holistic aspects of training. So the nutrition, the rest, the recovery, um, the massage, all of the minutiae that people can forget are crucial to enabling you to fulfill your yeah. potential and I you know I feel really really strongly that whilst I I am physically strong that it's often the mental strength that that carries us through and enables us to cope with the dark times well and of course that performance in Kona your last performance there was the culmination of that because it was the mental stuff and that triumph over adversity that got you through and got you to the finish line uh, you know, first. Yeah, I mean, of course, I was, I was physically strong. There's, there's no doubt. But I was going into the race very physically compromised as well as a result of the accident. Um, and I really think it was my ability to quiet that voice, that demon in your ear that's saying, "Quit, quit, pull to the side and quit." Yeah. You have to silence that voice, and it's. It was my ability to do that that enabled me to, to get to the finish line and, and, and win that race. And that's why I talk as much about training the mind as I do about training the body. S Steve Peters, the guy that worked with uh, Victoria Pendleton yeah, yeah. and British Sack, he talks about the monkey in the cage. And I, I remember the first time I heard this, and, you know, I've done 12 Ironman races, and I've had those same voices, and I'm sure everybody else has, of that getting louder. And you can, uh, you can just picture this monkey running around in your head causing havoc, can't you? And you've got to get him back in the cage and, and keep him quiet. Yeah, you have to keep a rein on, on your thoughts, and that has to be done in training. You know, there'll be times in training where you want to quit. There'll be times in training where it hurts. You'll, there'll be times in training where you're bored out of your brain because you're doing a five-hour ride and you're going up and down the same same road and it's coping with the pain coping with discomfort coping with boredom that you need to train yourself to be able 
to do, whether you're a triathlete, whether you're, you know, a, a cyclist or, you know, uh, a runner. It's, you've, we've all got to be able to cope with those demons and we've all be able to quiet, quiet, quiet that voice yeah. that, that can derail our, you know, our performance. And of course those, we're really just talking about life skills, aren't we? Because if we have those obstacles, we have a, a family illness, our own personal illness, you can't just give up. There must there be times when you want to give up. And one of the, one of the motivation phrases I, I like to use is, it's okay to think about quitting just as long as you don't. <laughs> it, yeah, it's so true. And I think we all have those motivational slumps. We all have times where we think we're not going to be able to succeed. And like you said, that's where the, the, t the tools come in to, to be able to... Um, to dispel that that voice and give yourself the peace of mind and the confidence that you can you can achieve. But you know, also important related to what you're saying is to keep perspective. You know, and I think we all, professional and amateur alike, have to be kind to ourselves and remember we can only do the very very best that we can do. And age groupers specifically have families social lives, work, other obligations that they need to combine with training, you need to be gentle with yourself and you need to look at what you can do in the context of your life rather than what you think you should be doing because you, you can only do the best that, that you can do, um, like I said, in the context of your life and you have to be happy with that. The, uh, there's a guy I used to coach, well, I, I used to coach him because their first baby was very ill. He spent the first year with his little, every day, wondering if he was going to survive. This guy was really passionate about his training and he would get upset if he couldn't make it. And he, I spoke to him the other day and he said, you know what, now I just think, well, how did I get my life? I saw out of perspective to get upset if I couldn't go swimming. Yeah. You know, it wasn't life and death, but I used to treat it was. But he said, now I know what life and death is because every day my son was being resuscitated. Yeah. So if I can go for a run and enjoy the sunshine, I do. But if I can't, it's no big, no big worry. And, and that's a really great lesson to us all. And Ironman triathlon generally is a huge challenge to people. And I can understand why it becomes a central focus of, of, of their lives. And, and that's very, very important. And sport is incredibly empowering for very many different reasons. But like you said, it's not life and death. And as long as we're enjoying it, we're enjoying the journey, we're sharing it with people that we love, yeah. I, I I think that's that's truly the most important thing. Yeah, and I started doing triathlon 25 years ago. I got into it because it looked like great fun. And I have to remind myself sometimes, I'm sure everybody else does, and maybe you did as well, that you know this was supposed to be fun. Yeah, you're, you're right. And I think what I've realized is that triathlon was becoming more of a job for me you know everything was so structured and so regimented I forgot how to just go out and ride my bike for the sheer love of riding my bike I was more obsessed with I have to do this interval and this interval and have this amount of rest and maybe I lost the raw love of sport that I that I that I used to have and I want to regain that and I am going out on my bike and I'm going out on my bike because I love going out on my bike, not necessarily because I have to yeah. hit a target or achieve a goal and I, and I think that's really, really important to remember and a lesson that I've learned then is perhaps not to be so regimented and every once in a while change, change your sessions or, or adapt or be a bit more flexible and that it's not it's not going to harm or hinder you and it's probably going to help. Yeah, okay, so 2013, what have you got next in your hectic travel, Taibo, boxing, Pilates schedule? Oh, yes, I'm going to be the next big thing on the Taibo kickboxing scene. No, I doubt that very much. Um, ski marathon next weekend, oh, yeah, yeah. so over to Switzerland, um, where I'm sure it's practically tropical. Yeah. Um, then I'm doing a speaking engagement in Spain at the end of March, and I uh, in, in Spanish? Um, no, no, not in Spanish. And uh, I, my Spanish skills are, are probably not good enough to um, for anyone to understand me. I could order a beer though, maybe, or get a hotel room, but that's about it. Um, 
Then there's potentially a trip to Rwanda because I'm getting quite heavily involved with uh, Team Rwanda there and some, some development projects out there. So that might be another project. Also going out to speak at an international women's conference in Bermuda. It's a tough life, Simon, but I might need someone to carry my bags. So if you want to come. But yeah, international women's conference. In I'm in, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't take too much persuading. And then looking forward, you know, I'm, I'm really excited, for example, in, in September to um, um, be involved in the World Champs in Hyde Park in yeah. London. So definitely we'll be in and around the country for that. Potentially on the sidelines of, of the London Marathon, cheering people on. Um, so there's, there's lots of different things that, that I'm involved in. I am going to come up with an endurance goal of one form or another um, in the next month or so. Um, not necessarily competitive as in a race, but um, definitely something that might be challenging for me. Well, your old housemate, Dion, he was trying to climb that uh, mountain in South America, wasn't he, recently? Maybe rock climbing or, or, or mountaineering might, might suit. Um, having spent time in Nepal, definitely mountaineering, oh, sorry, mountaineering definitely interests me. Um, I... I'm not the greatest fan of anything that begins with C and is cold. <laughs> um, it, it's, you know, I much prefer to, to be in the heat. So as soon as the temperature drops below minus, I tend to <laughs> head home. So, yeah, maybe not mountaineering. So, uh, you know, you see a lot of the previous winners in Kona. Is that something you will continue to do, or are you trying to sort of draw a line under that? No, Kona's... It's really important for me to go back to Kona um, to support loved ones that are racing, um, fingers crossed, <laughs> but to support all the age groupers, all the, my, you know, my fellow professionals, and obviously do, you know, do some work with my sponsors as well. Do you mind if I ask you, I was, obviously I go out there to work every year and I saw you right at the start line last year and you were just about to pull the plug on the cannon and I, heard, I overheard you saying, in a few hours I won't be the world champion any longer. It, was that quite hard for you being there last year as a sort of not able to or not being there to defend your title? Will it be easier this year? And the response to that when I said it was, you'll always be world champion. And that's what I have to remember, that I might not be the reigning world champion, but I will. no one can ever take away my, my world championship victories. And I always have to remember that. Yeah, it was a slight melancholy kind of moment there. And it, it, it was difficult. Um, but I know in my heart that I made the right decision. And that uh, enables me to, you know, to quash any kind of questions I might I might have it, it, in my mind but yeah there's absolutely no doubt it is it's difficult being in Kona and not and not racing of course it is um, but I know that I achieved all I needed to there and now it's time to move on but you're not going to do a Peter Reed and completely <laughs> escape from the sport and never turn although he has come back actually recently hasn't he yeah I mean Peter's pursued a new career, you know, he's a pilot and, and is extremely successful and I think that's what's really important that you still remain connected with the sport but that you do carve out a career that goes beyond you being you know, ex-world champion and, and you, your old story, I think you need new challenges and you need to carve out a new life path for yourself, otherwise you're always looking back at what you were and what was rather than what is and what is going to be. Well, listen, Chris, it's been great to catch up with you again, as always, and uh, wish you all the best with your new ventures. You. Um, let's, let us know what your new project is, your endurance project, as soon as possible so we can, uh, so we can buy you some crampons and some... <laughs> some ropes. Yeah, some ropes. <laughs> That's right, and uh, find you a mountain that uh, exists in uh, above, above tropical, par tropical paradise. That's right. So yeah, good luck for 2013. Uh, probably see you again next year. Thank you. Thank All right, you very much. bye bye.